At this point, you're gonna be probably using utilizing the iron boots. Because there's gonna be a lot of strong winds in this room. Stab him. Then you gotta hook shot this. I do recommend doing it when the fan is not moving. Otherwise, you might be pushed into the pit. But if you don't get it, that's fine. Now... Now, in this next room, you'll be facing off against another enemy, which is a, um... Which is a fire ice switch. A fake ice switch, if you will. He will try to fire at you, and uh, when his eyes open, you can also shoot an eye. You can shoot an arrow at it to destroy it. Of course, you can use your shield to reflect it, to reflect the flame. Then you must go into this next room. They don't seem to notice me. Which is pretty good. Here, I can hear the spirits whispering in this room. Those who have the sacred feet shall let the wind guide them. They Then, they will be led to a hidden path. That's what they are saying. Okay. Meanwhile, if you actually, um, use the, um... If... Meanwhile, if you use the Lens of Truth here, there will be a hidden chest here, which will give you some, I think, Decanuts? Bundled arrows, that's what it is. And if you play the, uh, song... If you play the Sun Song here, you will also summon... A, um, a humongous energy fairy that will pretty much maximize your HP as well as your magic. So it's really worth it. As you enter this next room, there is a secret path over here and you must use the fan to your advantage. Once at max speed, use the fan to access the next room. Then, in this next room, you'll be facing off against some Gibdos. I'm gonna get hurt here. Most of the time, you might as well just try to blame your, uh, your no-traction boots for not even getting a single any closer than you already are. And this is why I recommend that you do not use your traction boots when you're not actually going to use these for good advantage. The only reason you need the hover boots, of course, is to, like, reach to certain places that you honestly couldn't do. Okay, so opening up this treasure chest is pretty much leading over to a dead end. Because, um, as you can see, there's a locked door here, and we start to question, well, how do we progress further into this room? Well, if you have the dungeon map and the dungeon compass, you may notice that there's actually any extra... There's actually an extra chest in this dungeon. Let me take the hover boots off. I don't need them. My nose keeps itching. It's annoying. Over here is a bombable floor. You bomb that. And, uh, well, I guess use the length of truth, but I'm not going to use it. There's a hidden chest over here. Which will give you a small key. Then you go this way, and this is where we enter, of course, a room that seems to be very familiar, right? Well, let's go ahead and move this block, shall we? Now, once you move this block, it is actually permanent once you put it in its rightful spot. And once you use advantage of it, of course. My nose keeps itching. Once you use advantage of it, at any point you die and you have to go back to the very beginning, 
you can use this shortcut that I showed you earlier on into the dungeon, which I'm showing you on screen right now, um, to basically get back to this point and no longer need to go for the entire the entirety of this middle part of this dungeon just to get back to where I am right now. So you have yourself a gigantic shortcut to use in case you fail. Now, right over here, if you're gonna play Zelda's Lullaby, but don't do it yet. Instead, you should be playing the Scarecrow song. And if you play the Scarecrow song, you will summon Pierre in a certain corner. And then you must use your long shot to get right into him. Once you get over here, of course, you go ahead and shoot out this gold Skulltula. And you collect your, um, your, your fourth Skulltula token of this dungeon. There's one more Skulltula left. Now, you play Zolzola by here. To get this boat rolling. This is a haunted boat. And it floats. Hovers, rather. Pretty interesting. But while you're riding on the boat, you are being attacked. And depending on where the boat is, uh, you have a really good advantage, or a not very good advantage. You'll be dealing with two of them. But they ain't too bad. Once you take care of both of them, they are pretty much gone. So now all we gotta do is ride this boat to no end, cause I am on a boat. I'm on a boat. I am on a boat, and I'm on a boat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like that. Link, the ship is sinking! Abandon ship! Get on a safe platform! Yeah, if you don't get off fast enough, it will sink, and uh, you gotta jump and abandon ship into the safe area, of course. But yeah, once that's done, you go ahead and enter his next room. And, uh, this looks simple enough, right? Wrong. This is actually an, another invisible maze. So, um, you gotta use your lens of truth to navigate around the maze. And there's also, there's also floor masters everywhere. If you kill these, they'll split into freeze, so, uh, yeah. Oh no! The walls are colliding! Oh, we could just leave this room. So we don't have to worry about the walls colliding. But, we're gonna go back to the room, actually, because, well, I wanna kill myself. Not really. But, um, here's what you actually gotta do, by the way. You grab yourself Din Fire. And, uh, you play Din Fire to burn the Spike Trap. You also burn the Gibdos, and once you do that, you will also get the boss key of this dungeon. And also take out the other guy as well. I think in here's a small key, right? No, it's Bloopy. I think we got in most of the small keys. Again, you utilize the Lens of Truth to activate to go to the next room, which is over here. This next room has more basketball. Of course, before you do so, you get to the back of this room, and this is where we get the last Skulltula of this dungeon, of course. So, that is all five Skulltulas of this dungeon. We're pretty much good to go here. So, 
Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm gonna do it anyways because, um... I always, like, feel like being complete. But, um, if you want to, you can play Bombsketball. Uh, with the three platforms. It's not gonna be easy to do, and therefore, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my, uh... My regular bombs, so I can do these easily. And you have to play bomb skip ball. You have to do it three times, of course. Of course, you're only doing it for rewards. You get the you get a magic meter for the first one. My nose keeps itching. Stop itching. Man. Got it. And, uh, second one is bombs. Uh, extra bombs. Uh. Also, when the items on this rotating platform, for some reason, their 2D texture likes to spin, a spin in circles. So, you can see, like, paper bombs or paper magic. And it wouldn't make any sense. It's like a 2D texture for some reason. Like, a lot of these, like... Sure, like, Link is a 3D model. But some of these other items, these rubies are 3D models. But collecting bombs, collecting, uh... Collecting magic meter, it's a 2D model. So, like, some are, like, 2D models just to save up on memory. I want to say that the 3DS version... Uh, does more in terms of, like, 3D uh, models, but I could easily be wrong about that. Anyways, one more room to go into. And this is where we get into the itty-gritty of stuff. By the way, <sighs> another minor detail I might as well bring up now that I'm at. Also, I should, uh, if I'm gonna be using the spin attack, I should probably, uh, do that. But another minor detail I should bring up on, uh, the different versions between version 1.0, which is what I'm playing on right now, and also later versions of the game. So, early versions of the game likes to go in a really dark scenario, and they censored it in later versions, but, um, as you can see here on the floor, this is blood. Red, gory blood. It's red. Real like real life. <sighs> Now, in the later versions of the game, they turned the blood from red blood to green blood. To, like, not scar children, I guess. Sort of like something like they did with the Fire Temple when changing the Muslim chanting in the Fire Temple theme song. As well as, like, certain blocks and certain symbols throughout the entire game that... We did talk about these, like, earlier on, doing the Fire Temple, of course. And by the way, um, when you did that room, of course, you get a small key, I didn't mention it. But, um, next thing you do, you must grab your bone arrow and shoot the bomb that will blow up this pillar and will slam it down and impale Link in the face. He would've been dead there, but no. He was lucky. I'm not sure if you're expecting me to be in front of there, but I was there anyway. <sighs> this next bit is a little bit unnecessary, but I'm gonna do it anyways. You play the Song of Time here, you summon the Tong Song of Time block. You climb up the Song of Time block to get yourself some more H to get some HP. And then afterwards, you play the Scarecrow song. You play the Scarecrow song. To summon Pierre. So that way you can get up here and get more hearts. But it doesn't really do anything for you. I'm trying to find out what it could benefit, but it doesn't benefit you very well. Let me go ahead and switch that and switch this. Okay. 
So now moving on to the final room, using the key to unlock this door. And, well, of course, here's what you're gonna be requiring to use your, uh, hover boots, of course. Using the lens of truth, you can be able to, uh, see your footing of where to go. You're gonna have to use advantage of it to get across this room. And, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. By the way, after this, um, after this dungeon's over, there's gonna be Master Quest videos regarding War Temple, Bomb the Well, and Shadow Temple. So, really, guys, stay tuned for these videos after we're done with this video. Phantom Shadow Beast Bongo Bongo So Bongo Bongo would like to be invisible you would want to use your lens of truth you must use the uh you must use the uh the bow and arrow to shoot his arms off then you must shoot at the eye at the right timing and then deal as much damage you possibly can now, you don't necessarily need it. Now, the footage I'm showing you right now... There's actually something... That you can also do. But, um... You would, you would... And it is possible to get this item... Before you fight this boss. But, um, you, if you get the ice arrows... You can freeze one of the arms, you will be distracted to, uh... To attack that other arm. And, uh, this will give you a free shot. So it allows you to use less arrows. And it can be recommended to use. And, uh, most likely or not, if you're doing a randomizer, you'll most likely have that opportunity. Because, um, the ice arrows is in a random chest. And, um, even getting to the, uh, Shadow Temple could take a bit. Still not dead. Now, because like the hover boots have absolutely no traction, trying to fight this boss can be a bit of a chore at times. But um, I recommend fighting this boss without the hover shoes. Sure, like it will give you like less time to like use your arrows. But other than that. Once you've done it correctly, you will demolish the Divine Beast and secure a victory royale. Those are applied into the wrong games, but I don't care. And upon doing so, you of course get yourself a heart container, which of course maximizes your HP. We only need two more heart containers left, and then we are full on HP. So let's go ahead and finally meet up our, ow, my nose, uh, our, um, our fourth sage. No, 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 our fifth sage. The boy with the novel Zelda's Ocarina. As I expected, you have come. I am Impa, one of the Sheikah. I am Princess Zelda's caretaker, and I am also the sage who guards the Shadow Temple. We Sheikah have served the royalty of Hyrule from generation to generation as attendants. However, on the day seven years ago, Gandorf suddenly attacked, and a Hyrule surrounded surrendered after a short time. Gandorf's target was one of the keys of the Sacred Realm, the hidden treasure of a royal family, the Ocarina of Time. My duty bound me to take Zelda out of Gandorf's reach. When last I saw you, as we made our escape from the castle, 
You were just a lad. Now I see you. You have become a fine hero. There's nothing to worry about. The princess is safe now. Soon, you'll meet Princess Zelda face to face, and she will explain everything. That is when we, the six wise ones, will seal up the evil king and return peace to Hyrule. I have to stay here. You go to Princess Zelda's side and protect her on my behalf. Now, I put my power, which should be helpful to you, into this medallion. You receive the Shadow Medallion. Impa awakens the Sage and adds her power to yours. Please, look out for the Princess. Alright, well, I think this is basically a good way to wrap things up into this note. Of, of course, The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time, so... I really hope you guys looked forward to this Let's Play of The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. In the next episode, we're gonna figure out where the wind takes us next. And, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Play. Make sure to slap a like, subscribe with the bell notification turned on, follow my social media links in the description below. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, in the next few videos, it's going to be Master Quest for Water Temple, Bond of the Well, and the Shadow Temple. So, feel free to stick around with these three videos as they come out. And as always, Mario 4 one signing out. Have yourself a fantastic night, and I will see you, Legends, in the next one. Catch you guys later. Bye.